The Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell is largely an opinion talk show. All opinions, comments, or statements of fact expressed by Rob McConnell's guests are strictly their own and are not to be construed as those of the Exxon Radio Show or endorsed in any manner by Rob McConnell, Relmar McConnell Media Company, the Exxon Broadcast Network, its affiliated networks, stations, employees, or advertisers. Welcome to the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome back to the Exxon, everyone. I am Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. If you would like to uh, send us an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com on all social media sites, Exxon Radio TV. For all the broadcast information on the Exxon Broadcast Network and the broadcast schedule, www.xzbn.net. And for the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV www.simultv.com. Exo Nation, my guest this hour is a lady we've had the pleasure of having on the show before. Her name is Rosemary Ellen Guiley. And Rosemary is a leading expert in the metaphysical and paranormal fields with more than 65 books published on a wide range of paranormal, spiritual, and mystical topics, including nine single-volume encyclopedias and reference works. Her current work uh, focuses on interdimensional entity contact experiences, problem hauntings, spirit and entity attachments, the afterlife and spirit communication, psychic skills, dream work for the for a well-being, spiritual growth and development, angels, past and parallel lives, and investigation of unusual paranormal activity. Now, uh, Rosemary has worked in the paranormal field full-time since 1983. And uh, the best websites to contact or to find out more about Rosemary are www.visionarylivingpublishing.com and visionaryliving.com. And joining me now is Rosemary Ellen Guiley. And Rosemary, welcome back to the Exxon. Thank you so much, Rob. It's a pleasure to be back on. Well, super. My gosh, you have to be the hardest working lady in the paranormal field that I know. I certainly am one of them, and uh, as you can tell, I've got uh, interest in many fields. They're all interrelated, Mm -hmm. so uh, everything keeps me busy. I have an independent publishing house now that I also run, so in addition to writing books, I'm also acquiring, editing, and publishing the books of uh, some of my colleagues in the field. Good for you. Good for you. Um, So... For the listeners who may not have had the pleasure of hearing you before on the Exxon, can you share with us what drew you into doing the work in the paranormal that you were, have been doing full-time since 1983? Well, these really are lifelong interests for me. And like many people in the field, it starts very young in life. Mm-hmm. You get fascinated with the paranormal. And I was a, an avid reader when I was young. Uh, I had a fascination with horror, with uh, the paranormal, with sci-fi and fantasy, and um, it, it was uh, the kind of interest that just never went away and eventually grew into um, my freelancing right. as uh, a writer. And then when I became full-time in the writing field, it became my full-time professional pursuit, too. So I'm very lucky because I've been able to turn my personal interests into my professional passion. Why, in your opinion, having been in this field full-time since 1983, why do you think that the paranormal is is as popular today as it is. Everybody wonders about something paranormal or supernatural at some point. Uh, 
people have experiences mm-hmm. that they can't explain. Maybe they get kind of shaken up because it goes against their worldview. Maybe they've denied the existence of certain things, and then something happens to them, and they start to wonder about it. So uh, people are being drawn in all the time, and for some people it's just a quick in and out, and for others it becomes um, more of a research project, and then even a, a personal path. We certainly had a lot of attention in the media, too. Just look at the proliferation of documentaries, paranormal reality shows, yeah. um, on all kinds of topics. Yeah, but I've, I've been speaking to people who say that those shows have turned them off because they're so hokey. They are hokey. I will agree with you. Yeah. There's a formula to them. And as a longtime investigator, and any, anybody who's investigated the paranormal gone to a haunted place and mm-hmm. tried to collect evidence, you know things never happen on demand. And, and the fact that shows come on week after week and they've always got something to show, yeah. uh, they're contrived to a certain degree. But on the other hand, they do get people acquainted with the field. Um, one of the problems with them is that if you don't know much about the paranormal, you take what you see on television as the way it is. Right. And uh, that leads to certain expectations. But um, there's a good side and a downside to them. Mm-hmm. I, I'm sorry to see the documentaries not as popular as they used to be. I used to uh, film a lot for documentaries, and right. they've been supplanted by a, a lot of these reality shows, and that's a shame. It's the shock value. It is, yes. Yeah. And there's an increasing trend also to keep the audiences engaged. They get uh, jaded to certain things. Mm-hmm. And when you look at the paranormal ghost hunting shows, uh, more than a decade ago, it wasn't unusual for the investigation team to say, oh, nothing here. You know, we investigated and we didn't find anything. And now they have to find something. It has to be dramatic, and there's been an increasing emphasis on the demonic. Yeah, um, yeah. And You know, you just don't walk into a haunted house and suddenly it's full of demons. And it seems that there are more demonic or demonologists coming out of the woodwork that that I've never seen before. And when challenged about their qualifications, well, we've had our own experiences. Well, that doesn't mean anything, does it? Uh, It it depends on what their experiences are. Uh, Hmm. There have been many people coming into the field who have... Uh, said they had long histories of experience and investigations, and um, you know maybe that isn't uh, is isn't quite so. Right. Um, there's a certain element in the field that wants to participate in uh, the glory of it. You know, get the attention, uh, get on TV, uh, go to the conferences. But there's there also to counter that there there is a serious core audience. Uh, two of investigators that are very dedicated to their work. They're really trying to find out information that's going to help us understand why these things happen, uh, what exactly uh, constitutes the paranormal, Mm -hmm. how does it fit into our concepts of reality. Because there's no doubt about it, throughout human history, people have encountered things that can't be explained naturally. I got you. But have you found a difference? I know I have since... The paranormal has gone from um, an educational, investigative type of organizational system to now a money-making business. Well, as a person who's Mm self-employed, and I've earned my living by uh, researching, writing, and investigating, Mm -hmm. not just in the paranormal but related fields, um, yes, there is a money component to it. Uh, My view is that the paranormal really has split kind of in two, and it's been largely because of the influence of uh, the paranormal reality shows. And so we have a segment of the paranormal that's gone off in the entertainment industry, and that's the TV, uh, the glory hounding, uh, mm-hmm. people who are looking for some personal fame, perhaps. Uh, and they're using the entertainment model to do that. And the serious paranormal um, part of the field is off on another track altogether. Yeah, and you it's, see, this is, this is the track that I put you on as, the, as being a very serious person who takes their work uh, with uh, with professionalistic outlooks, and, and you take pride in your work. 
Well, I do, yeah. and my goal has always been to plumb the mysteries, mm-hmm. uh, to find information that will be of value to people in their own search for uh, answers to questions. And that's how I've looked at my work throughout my entire career. I right. have uh, turned down offers uh, to to be on TV, and I've been asked, you know, can you act out? Can you run and scream? Uh, well, I'm not going to do that. Uh, it uh, To me, it... it Okay. It does a disservice to the serious part of the work. Something else that I've noticed lately, there are more and more people talking about shadow figures, shadow people. I think it's a very common experience, mm-hmm. uh, probably more common than ghosts per se, uh, because um, it's um, it's a kind of a bedroom visitation that happens to a lot of people. Uh, these are figures that seem to haunt uh, certain landscapes. They can haunt homes and buildings, uh, landscapes, pieces of the land. They can become attached to people. And many of these experiences are scary. I did start researching shadow people around 2004, and, and I collected um, many anecdotes from people, hundreds and hundreds of them, in fact. And there are patterns to the experiences. Uh, what they are, they're different theories to them. Uh, I don't think they're ghosts of the dead, for example. All right, stand by, uh, uh, Rosemary. You and I have to take our first break. Exxon Nation, Rosemary Ellen Guiley is our very special guest. Uh, She's a super lady, Exxon Nation. Her websites are visionarylivingpublishing.com and visionaryliving.com. And Rosemary and I will return on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. My name is Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, Join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the X-Zone from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember X-Zone Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X-Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV. Plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like Zone, sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included 
free video on demand, live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Welcome back, everyone. Rosemary Ellen Guiley is our special guest this hour, and we're talking about, ooh, the paranormal, my favorite topic. What is your favorite topic when discussing the paranormal, Rosemary? That's a really tough question to answer, Rob, because I'm interested in so many things, and it seems like whatever I'm researching currently Mm -hmm. is at the top of my list. I'm fascinated by it all. I've spent probably more time in the paranormal than I have in uh, some of the other topics. I also uh, cover UFOs, cryptids, uh, mysterious phenomena, metaphysics, spirituality, One of my current uh, major interests in the past several years has been afterlife studies, and uh, I've done several books on contact with the dead and what happens after we die, uh, near-death experiences, uh, visits from the dead, and uh, things of that nature. This is a field that's uh, been rapidly expanding in recent years, and I I think it's because uh, a lot of people are, you know, coming to terms with, uh, their own questions about uh, what happens on the other side of the veil. And they're, we're dealing with uh, family and friends who are um, a passing, and we want to know where they've gone, are they okay. And uh, so there has been a, a big resurgence of interest in that. In fact, uh, next week I'm going to be in Scottsdale, Arizona, at the largest afterlife symposium, mm-hmm. uh, which has been growing for a number of years now, and it's attracting professionals as well as lay people. You know, the uh, medical profession, therapy, counseling, uh, healing uh, practitioners who are looking for information to help people grapple with questions it, about it, dying, it, death, is, and survival. Is the, is the question? about death because of our own questionability about our very own mortality that we want to believe there is more to life than just this this flash in the pan that we have here in this reality it's probably the biggest question that has faced humanity throughout history what Mm -hmm. happens to us after we die and we can intellectually have ideas about that uh, what we've been taught especially through religion or what we've uh, come to Uh, believe uh, by examining science or anecdotal experience. And even though we may have our beliefs, people still wonder, well, what really does happen? Uh, What's the proof? We think we know, but do we really know? Based on your research, uh, what do you believe happens after we die? I have always believed in survival after death. I also believe in reincarnation, and that's from a very uh, young period in my life as well. Mm -hmm. My concept of the afterlife is that it is a a changeable and fluid place. That is, uh, I do not believe in a final judgment or an eternal heaven or hell. I believe that both of those states exist in varying degrees, but that the soul in its progress, in its journey... uh, has the capability of um, changing and uh, that redemption is possible. And uh, we are held accountable for our actions and our next incarnations are um, according to, you know, how well we've done and uh, that we always have the chance to improve ourselves. So um, So communication from those who have passed on uh, validate those kinds of concepts. But if the, if, the, if the communication from the other side is valid, why is it that only certain people can communicate with the other side? And why is it that certain people never hear from anyone on the other side or never experience a near-death experience, never experience um, an out-of-body experience, never experience the meeting of spirits in dreams and so on? Some of it has to do, I believe, with 
uh, the nature of consciousness itself, something we know very little about. Uh, consciousness in metaphysical terms would be a, a subtle vibration of energy that mm -hmm. tunes into different frequencies, and these realities exist on different frequencies. I talk all the time to people who um, are uh, very... Um, uh, you know, they, they're they anxious and they really want to hear from someone who's passed on uh, to get some indication that they're all right, and nothing seems to happen for right. them. And other people have these dramatic experiences that bring them great peace. But how many um, of these dramatic but, experiences are nothing other than the placebo effect that is being uh, manifested by the person's own mind, the person's own consciousness, giving them the inner peace that they seek and has nothing to do with the paranormal. Well, certainly uh, that's a, an argument from the skeptics. That well, no, 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 that's not a skeptical. I'm not, I'm not being a skeptic here. I am being someone who's asking a serious question because mm -hmm. it seems that members of the paranormal community, as soon as you start asking questions, you're a skeptic. And I'm not a skeptic. I'm a broadcaster. I'm a journalist. I'm an investigator and a researcher. That's what well, I, I would am. like to think. I would like to finish my thought sure, uh, because please do. this is an argument that skeptics advance, uh, and uh, the argument is made that well, it's wish fulfillment that mm -hmm. uh, you're desiring something so much or you're grieving so much that uh, you have projected or kind of self-created the experience that you want. And uh, you know, the honest answer is we can't prove these experiences or disprove them. Right. I've done quite a bit of research, for example, on dream visits from the dead, and um, this seems to be the most common way that uh, the dead can can come to uh, give us messages and reassurance. And mm -hmm. my belief is it's because when we are sleeping, we are in an altered state of consciousness, where. Uh, we are able to access things that we can't access in waking consciousness. When the dead uh, talk uh, in their visits, they will often say they don't have much time. It took a great deal of difficulty to make this bridge happen. It is a bridge. It's mm -hmm. a bridge of frequencies. And we don't know what the combustible mix is to make this happen on demand. And I believe that that's why some people get these kinds of experiences and others don't. It doesn't have anything to do with wish fulfillment or whether you deserve something or you don't. Uh, it's a, a mix of subtle energies that uh, we don't have the ability to completely understand. So I believe that these experiences are real. It is, however, I do acknowledge mm -hmm. that it is hard to separate out things like wish fulfillment and projection. Uh, and some of those do get uh, in, into the mix as well. But if you're looking the at the bottom line, if, I'm sorry? If you're looking at the big picture, whether you're a believer or a skeptic, neither can prove their point. That's right. Now, the position that I've always taken, uh, regardless of the field that I'm researching, is mm -hmm. that you look for natural explanations first. Sure. Not everything is paranormal. Don't jump there immediately, mm -hmm. uh, because there are frequently natural explanations for things. And if those can be reasonably eliminated, then you're left with something that is potentially unexplained. Um, the bottom line is, what does it mean to you, the experiencer? And I think this is where we have to cut the wheat from the chaff, that the person who's having the experience has to find some sort of meaning for it so that they are empowered by that experience. And that's something that nobody else can do for them or take away from them. Um, and it's definitely... Um, you know, this, this isn't the stuff that science really likes because mm -hmm. uh, of the subjective nature of it, but that is the nature of all of these experiences. They are subjective, and they, they are um, beyond measurement, at least at our current capability. Then what is the difference between wish fulfillment and subjectiveness? Um, well, I'm not I'm not quite sure what you mean exactly because um, all of these experiences are subjective, but um, many of them are uh, many of them happen without someone expecting it or wanting it, uh, and I think those are some of the most dramatic at all mm -hmm. uh, of all. 
and uh, other people really want something. They're desperately looking for any sort of sign, so they're projecting their consciousness onto anything that's, that has some kind of meaning for them. Uh, when you're visited by an experience, you have an experience that comes out of the blue, totally unexpected, not anything you were looking for, um, that can carry a little more weight than something uh, that happens to a person who is going to find that no matter what. Uh, it's definitely an uncertain playing field mm -hmm. out there when it comes to experience. I deal in these experiences all the time. That's the bulk of my work is helping people find meaning in their experience, especially when there are others around them who are telling them it wasn't real. Right. Uh, to dis and, and this can come from friends and family. It can come from therapists, doctors, scientists, religious people. Uh, there's so, always somebody so, out there who's going to tell you your experience was not real. So basically what you're doing is you're giving them the answers that they're looking for, or you're giving them the support that they're looking for. You're giving them the the approval of the experience they claim to have. Well, it's a, a validation process, and I think that people need information. For example, mm -hmm. one of the things that can help people find meaning is to uh, learn about the similar experiences of others so they know, know they're not alone. There are patterns to these experiences, and so many people find a validation in that that um, it, it wasn't something that might have been just their imagination because oh. other people have had similar experiences. All right, stand by. You and I have to take our news break at the bottom of the hour. Exxon Nation, Rosemary Ellen Guiley is our guest, www.visionarylivingpublishing.com and visionaryliving.com. And we'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. On the Exxon Broadcast Network, Talkstar Radio Network, Mutual Broadcast Network, iHeart Radio, ZOEN FM, Simul Radio, and Simul TV. I'm Rob McConnell. Don't go away. Broadcast studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, to the world and beyond. You're watching the Exxon Broadcast Network, www.xzbn.net. AVS Media. Day. You have heard of the Exxon? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide. 15 exclusive channels like Exxon, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the X-Zone Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the X-Zone Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan, and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365.
Rob McConnell here, presenting an overview for Nicholas Paul Jinnick's, author of a fascinating book, Amen. It presents facts revealed by Egyptologists, facts that enable us to understand why Amen is the beginning of creation of God. It provides recommendations for religious leaders of the major religions to unify their beliefs and teach the Word of God, love one another. Amen informs people how mankind conceived God. It was the Egyptians that developed the concepts of a soul, a hereafter, and son of God. And finally, after the worship of many gods, they conceived the belief in one universal God, the maker of all there is. For more information, visit www.futureofgodamen.com. That's www.futureofgodamen.com. So Nation, Rosemary Ellen Guiley is our guest, and uh, Rosemary, uh, during the during the break, I, I had an I had a thought that when we're talking about the wish fulfillment, we're saying that this is part of the conscious mind. Yes. Is it possible? Um, is it possible that the experience that comes out of the blue is actually being projected by the subconscious? Well, these are things that I have uh, considered mm-hmm. in a lot of my research, and we simply don't have the answers yet. For example, yeah. I believe that a lot of projection takes place when a paranormal team goes to investigate mm-hmm. uh, a location. There uh, may uh, be existing uh, phenomena in a place, but when somebody comes in in expectation of engaging with it, they are projecting their consciousness uh, as a group and individually into the environment, and that's going to alter the environment. Right. Uh, we are n- we we're never uh, separate from the environment or things that happen to us, and uh, so the projection of consciousness can create thought forms. It can create phenomena if it's strong enough. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these are concepts that are part of you know mystical traditions going back to ancient times. Uh, and I think that they play into our uh, paranormal and even mystical e- experiences now. Uh, and how do we understand that? And how do is there any way to separate that from the experience mm-hmm. itself? There may not be. What about all the different uh, types of radio waves and Wi-Fi and microwave towers that have been put up all over the place? We've, uh, you know, there was a survey done as to the correlation of the increase in paranormal activity to the time when the different uh, cell companies started putting up cell towers all over the place. Why isn't this taken into consideration when investigating the paranormal? I think it never occurs to a lot of investigators to to look in those directions. Mm -hmm. And here again, uh, how do do we measure how this impacts the the alternate reality environment? Uh, I think that it is a factor. All of these things have to be taken into sure. consideration uh, because uh, we also have a lot of evidence that the use of um, electromagnetic energy mm-hmm. in our appliances, computers, televisions, and, and so on yeah. can sometimes deflect activity. It can dampen down activity. So it definitely has a, right. an effect on the environment. And it's also interacting with our consciousness as well. Sure, that's why they don't suggest you you know you have a... Uh, a, f- uh, a phone by your bed that has multiple uh, multiple units throughout the house that uses a, a Bluetooth or a Wi-Fi connection because it does alter sleep patterns and it does alter your life. Listen, you've got a new book out called Haunted Hills and Hollows, What Lurks in Green County, Pennsylvania. Tell us about that. And this book was is the product of years of research, mm-hmm. and uh, it came about after I was on a radio show one night, and I was contacted by a man who had listened to the show, who lived in Greene County, which is a very far southwestern uh, county in Pennsylvania, butts up against West Virginia, and he said, you want to come down here? We have a lot of strange things going on. And uh, I get a lot of requests like that, and I, I certainly can't uh, answer them all, but there was something about his email and the details that intrigued me 
And uh, the short of it is that it was the start of um, a friendship and, and uh, collaboration and years of research of uh, me traveling down to, uh, to Pennsylvania to look at the landscape down there. Uh, it's a part of the state that never really got much attention from paranormal investigators, even though it's right next to one of the uh, biggest Bigfoot counties in the state, Fayette County, and West Virginia, which is also very active. And a lot of it is just very remote. Mm -hmm. Um, Like West Virginia, a lot of hills and hollows, uh, families who have lived for generations in the same place, and a lot of paranormal activity in the landscape that uh, has been accepted by generations because they've lived with it, but has never really been uncovered and, uh, and brought out into the open. So uh, the book goes into the history of the place. There, there were a lot of uh, colonial and Indian wars, a lot of bloodshed, um, Native American burial grounds and mounds that got built on uh, today by uh, condos and housing developments, a lot of mining going on. Um, underground tunnels are, from a folklore perspective, uh, excellent spirit conduits. And so we documented a lot of unusual activity, um, abductions, UFO activity, Bigfoot, uh, winged humanoids, lizard men, dog men, uh, blob things, mole things. That was our description for it because uh, we couldn't come up with any other description. And uh, the book rocketed to um, number one bestseller in uh, three different categories in print and ebook. Uh, and I think because we just uncovered such a collection of weird stories. Now, when you say you documented the different uh, paranormal activity, what kind of a documentation uh, did you give your readers? A lot of it was anecdotal. We interviewed a lot of people about mm-hmm. their experiences and yeah. uh, we did find uh, corroborating experiences um, in in the course of our interviews. Um, some people had uh, documented things with dates, times, places. Uh, you but, know, some. But I guess what I was yeah. getting at, there was no physical evidence that you found. No foot. You didn't take any photographs of any of the paranormal activity. Um, no, and okay. uh, in fact, getting genuine photographs of paranormal activity is. Uh, I think it's harder uh, than uh, most people think. It's certainly harder than what the uh, paranormal reality TV shows Mm -hmm. portray. Uh, Most of the people who've had experiences over the years um, had no camera available or didn't think to try and capture a photo. It was eyewitness accounts. Many of these experiences happen very quickly. Mm -hmm. And so it's uh, uh, anecdotal. And um, a lot of storytelling. Sure. Uh, and so you know you evaluate the witnesses and their credibility, and um, what's how, how does this fit into other known patterns of similar kinds of stories? Mm-hmm. Now, my co-author Kevin Paul is a native of the area. In fact, his family goes back uh, in lineage to to colonial times, and so uh, I felt that he, not only did he know the landscape, literally, um, but he also knew um, a lot of the people involved and um, was a good uh, barometer okay. of, of people's credibility. Now, now you said there, I, were, there were UFO sightings as well as uh, abduction cases, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, Green County has had its its share of what I would call UFO corridors mm-hmm. and um, small waves of, of sightings. Nothing big like uh, the Hudson Valley sightings that gripped New York sure. in, in the 1980s, but uh, certainly waves of sightings that happened uh, at certain periods in time. We started the book with um, uh, an abduction story that um, uh, we call it the, um, the alien lobster thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a, a woman who uh, had a, a range of paranormal experiences, as did her family over the years, and UFO activity over the house. And she had an experience one night where um, what she saw looked like a giant creature resembling a lobster that um, 
appeared in her second floor uh, bedroom window, uh, which was lit with an unusual light, grabbed her uh, in her bed with a a giant claw Mm -hmm. and pulled her off the bed and was attempting to pull her out the window. And she struggled against it, um, was able to free herself, fell to the floor, the creature disappears. Um, When she wakes up in the morning, she's still on the floor, and her immediate thought is, Uh, This must have been some horrible nightmare, but her entire arm is black and blue and bruised where the creature had grabbed her. So how how do we evaluate that? Well, did you have the opportunity of speaking to her? Oh, yes, uh, at length and over multiple interviews. Did she go to the doctor? uh, Did she go to the doctor? Was there any medical report? No, and that is frequently the case that, uh, now she was a teenager at the time, she didn't Mm -hmm. even tell her parents because she was afraid that even though her mother talked about the UFOs all the time and the apparitions of grandma in the house, Mm -hmm. that uh, she would not be believed. But uh, people often do not report their experiences because the first thing they think of is they're going to be called crazy or ridiculed. So how did she explain the bruising on her arm to her parents? Um... I, I don't think she did. I think she just covered it up. Wouldn't and that be one of the first? It was not until years later mm-hmm. that she uh, she acknowledged the the experience, and she had other experiences as well. Yeah. Um, and she lived on a farm uh, where there were shadow figures and uh, there was Bigfoot activity, um, and that's not uncommon in remote areas for all kinds of things to be sliding around at night. All right, you and I have to take our final break. Uh, stand by, Exonation. If you'd like to get your copy of the X Chronicles newspaper, it's uh, available as always at www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com. All our online papers are free. They're a minimum 92 pages, full color. And uh, this month alone, it has been downloaded or read in over 9,000 cities around the world. If you'd like to get your copy, go to www.xchroniclesnewspaper.com or if you'd like to buy the print version, they're available on Amazon.com. This is the Exxon. I am Rob McConnell. This is a place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard Monday through Friday from 10 p.m. Eastern until 2 a.m. Eastern. And then on the weekend on various times throughout the different platforms and radio stations, TV stations that we are on. Check us out at www.xzbn.net and www.simultv.com. Don't go away. We'll be back after this break. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand worldwide and more does this sound like tomorrow's television well it is but you can have it today right now it is simul tv simul tv offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like exxon sci-fi and horror we are worldwide no other provider offers that 500 built-in video games no need to have an extra expensive system we have them included free video on demand live streaming events from around the world, interactive online network, and much more. Tomorrow's TV today, Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, Join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. 
With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, The X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com, or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, Exxon Radio TV. For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxoneradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember Exxon Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. So Nation, Rosemary Ellen Guiley is our guest, www.visionaryliving.com. You've also got another book that is entitled Guide to Psychic Protection. Tell us about that book. Yes, that just came out this year, and it's uh, got material in it that I have collected over the years based mm-hmm. on my research and experience. It uh, concerns uh, how, how to protect yourself against um, frankly, mostly toxic people uh, rather than hostile spirits from uh, things like psychic vampirism and psychic attack, negative energy. Uh, there are negative forces around us, and some mm-hmm. people are more vulnerable than others. Many people will never have any issues at all. But uh, the people who've come to my workshops over the years, um, I would say most of them are there because they're dealing with toxic people that they have to engage with on a frequent basis, and they feel very drained by it. Uh, other people are doing uh, paranormal work, and, and they're uh, interested in uh, how to deal with, with the hostile spirit forces. So it, it covers the concepts of psychic vampirism and psychic attack, how those things can occur, and what are some of the ways that we can uh, protect ourselves against that, either to ward it off, um, protect ourselves on an ongoing basis so we just automatically deflect it, or remedy it once uh, something has occurred. And uh, the most important uh, component to that, Rob, is not the topical remedies. I do include them in the book, things like amulets and um, environmental things that we can do to change energy. But really the best protection that we can generate comes from within, and it has to do with the field of energy around us, which is our best shield of deflection. So uh, I've advocated over the entire course of my career um, instituting a practice of daily meditation and having some kind of spiritual foundation, whatever is important to you to connect to, uh, and that uh, these are, are things that it's like going to the psychic spiritual gym. You know, you kind of pump spiritual iron, right. and it builds up your energy field so that uh, you automatically deflect negativity that comes your way. Uh, so there is a spiritual component to that mm. book as well as a paranormal, occult, topical uh, side to it. So, uh, so is there a common thread between all the people who seem to be going to the different workshops, the different uh, conferences, the different conventions? Having done this since uh, 1983, what have you observed to be the common thread between all of these people? Well, the audience that that I gravitate to the most are the serious seekers, Mm -hmm. and there are people who will, and I've seen this especially in the paranormal, they'll jump in because it looks thrilling and exciting, uh, and they want to participate in that uh, exciting energy. And maybe that's it for them, you know, just the, hey, we got a ghost here, and uh, that's as far as they want to take it. But 
for people who are attracted uh, for whatever reason and stay in the fields long enough, they wind up doing some uh, very serious searching, and it becomes kind of a personal spiritual search uh, as well. It leads them onto paths of inquiry about uh, who we are, what our connection is to the source of all being, to all of creation, what are these alternate realities that seem to impinge on us, and um, that's the audience that I wind up addressing most of the time. Uh, so it's, I find it to be very rewarding work, and I've enjoyed doing it. As I, as I mentioned at the start mm-hmm. of the show, I feel very fortunate that I've turned my personal interests into my professional passion, and um, there's always something new on the horizon. I guess, yeah. So what have been some of your major finds doing all the research that you've done over the years in the different fields that you've done? I'm um, not quite sure what you mean by major fun. Well, what are, uh-huh. when, you know, when somebody does research, they're looking for something, right? When somebody mm-hmm. investigates something, I know when I was a cop and I was investigating, I was investigating a crime to bring this, to apprehend the suspect, to bring the suspect to justice. So as a person who, who does research in the paranormal and mystical fields, uh, you know, near death, past life, and so on, what have you found at the end of the research that you've done? Or is the research still going on? It's an ever-ongoing uh, process. It's in a constant stage of unfoldment. And uh, I've often been asked, uh, well, is there anything else you can do? Certainly, ha- haven't, you, um, you know, haven't you run out of ideas mm-hmm. by now? And the answer is no. You know, I've, I've got uh, close to 70 books out. And... Um, to me, it's um, I, I'm still on the process of discovery, but um, along the way, uh, for example, one of the notable things is all all the research that I did for a long period of time on dream visits from the dead, mm-hmm. and uh, I have a book on on that called uh, Dream Messages from the Afterlife Visits from the Dead, and uh, because I I wanted to validate for people that. Uh, this is a way and one of the most common ways for people to have these uh, post-mortem uh, communications and visits from those who have passed on, and that there, there is, um, these are real experiences. They're not imaginary. Yeah. Um, they're not hallucinations. They're real experiences, and they have a great deal of power to help people uh, in their grieving process to validate uh, their thoughts about the afterlife, uh, and to to open up new areas of, of inquiry. And uh, even though outsiders could say, well, you're dealing with uh, a lot of uh, subjective, uncertain material, uh, I mean, yes, we are, but what's the bottom line? It, it goes back to what is important to the experiencer, what do they get out of it, what is their self-empowerment, and how does this information help them on their own process of discovery? We're all looking for truth with a capital T, and that's something that nobody can do for you, you have to do it yourself. So, with the new, let me see, with the new younger generation coming into the paranormal field, they have a totally different way of looking at things. They have technology that, going back to the 80s, wasn't available. They have the ability to self-publish a book a week if they want. How is this going to affect people like yourself who've been in the industry uh, since 1983, over 70 books. How is this going to affect you? It certainly had an influence. And here again, it's another one of those things that's got a good side and a downside. Mm -hmm. And the uh, the downside of it is, yes, anybody can publish a book now uh, with the technology available, but is it going to be worthy of, of an audience? And that's where quality and discernment and your expertise and and skill come in. On the other hand, that technology has made it possible for me to have a flourishing independent publishing company. Mm -hmm. Uh, When I started my career, I wound up being published by every major publisher in the English-speaking language. And that career rolled on uh, with great momentum for um, you know, a couple of decades, and then the industry changed, yep. and the industry itself had a hard time adapting to this new technology and the fast-moving uh, stream of information that we're now in. Mm-hmm. It does not accommodate the old ways of publishing. Right. 
So I was able to adapt to that, and uh, that's been very, very beneficial for me. So let let me let me. We're running out of time very fast over here, and and I'm sorry to to have cut you off. So, but what is the ultimate goal then? What happens after years down the road? There's no proof of the afterlife. There are no ghosts. There are no UFOs. What we've been chasing are 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 mental manifestations of each and every one of us. What happens? I think a whole new field opens up, and that it gets back to this uh, question of consciousness. The the uh, the wild card in all of this is human consciousness, and I think that we are going to continue to discover in our inquiries and research that consciousness is a big uh, factor in what we experience. And to me, that's an exciting frontier uh, to explore. It's not the it's not the end of the paranormal by any means. It's the beginning of a whole new vista. How come science isn't taking the paranormal seriously? I think it's a scary uh, thing for a lot of scientists because, um, you know, hard science is about measurement. It's mm-hmm. about uh, being able to replicate things. It's about proof. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, be able to prove things in mm-hmm. a physical sort of way. And all of these experiences uh, are, are ju- just fly in the face of that. And so science has always had a hard time grappling with the paranormal and the unseen. And uh, the field of parapsychology that emerged out of psychical research that got established in the, the late 19th century, it's always struggled for acknowledgement, for, for respect. So, so, you know, the old Rodney Dangerfield, I don't get no respect. Uh, and uh, yet parapsychology has made some strides in our understanding. Uh, they've established evidence for ESP, for psychokinesis, and uh, they're still, it's still very difficult for science to grapple with uh, these subjective experiences. Take near-death experience, for example. Uh, mm-hmm. The field is still divided. If you look at the scientists, it's still divided as to whether or not uh, a near-death experience is nothing more than chemicals firing exactly. in the brain trying to make death palatable versus something that's of a grander nature. But once again, it goes to the individual on what they want to believe, and belief is the strongest power in the universe. That is the filter for all of all of these experiences, um, but it's also how we validate and empower uh, ourselves. Rosemary, our I have to say so long. Truth. I have to say so long for tonight. I want to thank you so much for joining us and. Uh, Exonation, if you'd like to visit uh, Rosemary's site, it is visionaryliving.com. Personally, based on what evidence that I've never seen, to me, it's mind over matter. It's your own body, your own consciousness, as they would say, creating the event in order to give you some peace, some understanding, because whether it's conscious or unconscious, you are creating your very own paranormal experience. My name is Rob McConnell. I'll be back on the other side of this break as we continue here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, join me, Rob McConnell, as together we'll investigate the world of the paranormal and the science of parapsychology here on the Exxon Radio TV show on XZBN and the Exxon TV channel on Simul TV. Since 1990, the Exxon Radio TV show has been the place where people dare to believe and dare to be heard. Together, we'll investigate UFOs, aliens, ghosts, Bigfoot, Psychic phenomena, lake monsters, conspiracy theories, government cover-ups, the truth embargo, alien abductions, ESP, haunted locations from around the world, and so much more. With over 28 years of broadcasting and more than 4,500 individual guests, the X-Zone is truly a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality, as evidenced by the credibility, integrity, and professionalism of the guests that we bring to our international audience. If you have seen a UFO, had a close encounter, seen a ghost, Bigfoot, lake monster, or a story that you would like to share or have investigated, contact me, Rob McConnell, by sending me your email to xzone at xzoneradiotv.com or you can call toll-free 1-800-610-7035, extension 143, and on Skype, X-Zone Radio TV. 
For more information on the Exxon Radio TV show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, visit www.exxonradiotv.com or www.exxonetvchannel.com or simultv.com and xzbn.net. Until next we meet here in the Exxon from our broadcast center and studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Always remember Exxon Nation. Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart in the light. You have heard of the X Zone? Now watch it on Simul TV, plus 500 video games, live TV channels, free video on demand, worldwide, and more. Does this sound like tomorrow's television? Well, it is, but you can have it today, right now. It is Simul TV. Simul TV offers what the others only wish they could provide 15 exclusive channels like X Zone, Sci Fi, and Horror. We are worldwide. No other provider offers that. 500 built-in video games. No need to have an extra expensive system. We have them included. Free video on demand. Live streaming events from around the world. Interactive online network and much more. Tomorrow's TV today. Simul TV. Sound too good to be true? Well, it's not. You can have Simul TV today. Sign up at simultv.com. Do it today.